Hey folks, Steve here. Just a uh, kind of a short video uh, that's more or less by request. Uh, two or three of my multitude of listeners have uh, made some inquiries about the uh, air system that I have with the trailer. I think uh, one of the videos that I had recently had something to do with, you know, the compressor was involved or I had air hoses or something like that. And then there was a couple of questions. So I figured, eh, well, I'll shoot a quick video and just kind of showcase the air of the trailer. So that's what this video is. Shouldn't run too long. So this uh, compressor is a Makita model MAC. I'm assuming for Makita. So MAC 5200-5200. This, com this uh, compressor I had ever since uh, before I bought the trailer. I had this to actually work on my house where I was uh, doing shingles, bang, you know, framing the upstairs and everything when I did the addition. And so uh, this compressor has been with me for a while. It uh, has, uh, it's, it, there's a place to put oil in here. It's a compressor that takes a lot of draw when this thing fires up. I know there are solenoid uh, uh, compressors. Uh, they may be oilless. Uh, I'm not a compressor guy. I'm not an engine guy, so I don't know. But um, where uh, the draw is a lot less in order to fire. And whenever I get a new trailer, uh, I'll probably sell this with this trailer when I go to sell it. And uh, I'll just leave it with the trailer. And uh, I'll get another compressor that will uh, have a lot less draw and can, fi and can fire up on any given day. All right, so that's where it is. Lives on board all the time. So that's that's how this works. And it plugs in, and I'll actually grab this and start waving it around here and showing you the details. Okay, so this is that Makita compressor. I have taken the handle, and I've been able to uh, loosen the handle up and actually fold it down this way. The handle would fold back up, and you could treat it like a wheelbarrow. Uh, single tank, and uh, air release valve, pressure release... Down there is your on off. Currently it is on and it is holding 100 and uh, looks like 140 or so pounds of pressure. Uh, and it does have the ability to uh, fire uh, two hoses at the same time. I do have a lot of just components, anything I need for my air compressor. And this is where this lives. And it's permanently plugged in there. It permanently stays on the trailer. All right, so that's it for kind of the main compressor. So what I will do is I will pigtail up. Let me go ahead and get there to ground. So here I have the pigtail ready to go. It's all into the compressor and this is all charged up. This will actually go up to, that's a three eighths inch hose. I do have a quarter inch that I use to extend it, but that's a three inch hose or a three eighths inch hose. So it's a flexzilla hose. It should be a hundred feet. And I believe I have a 50 foot extension, which is just kind of a generic yellow extension onto it. So I have 150 feet of hose sitting right there. <clears throat> Grab the hose. Pull it out as far as I can go wherever I need to within obviously 150 feet. All right, so then once it's once it's pulled out to where it needs to go and it's stationed, ready to go, normally I'll feed it inside of the house through a window that I can close or uh, a door, you know, whatever I can, cat door, you know, something like that. So get it inside the house wherever I'm working, and then it's ready to plug in a gun and get going, but I do have to plug that pigtail in. So I'm back to here. So it's then back into the trailer. And normally, normally that would actually fire right up uh, the compressor because the amount of air that that is actually going to take. So the volume is enough oftentimes to get the compressor to cycle. I'm kind of surprised it didn't. But if it didn't, then I wonder if maybe the uh, internal breaker on this compressor is actually uh, tripped. So let me go ahead and check that. And I will say on this particular compressor, with my orientation being tucked into that corner the way it is, the breaker is on the opposite side, so I kind of have to squeegee it out a little bit and then you have to reach under. But even then, that breaker, it's just a small button reset breaker, kind of like we would see on a table saw, that it is very inconveniently placed. And I do not have like long, thin, nimble elf fingers. I've got like dwarf hands, you know, and, you know, and I mean like L Lord of the Rings Tolkien dwarf, okay? So, you know, no offense to anyone here. I'm, t I'm talking fantasy world. As a hobbit, I have dwarf hands. And so with these these fat hands, it's difficult to get in there and hit that reset button. But I'm going to check because normally that should cycle. So pause, check, and I'll report back. 
So hey, uh, nothing wrong with the breaker. Breaker was ready to go. Actually, breaker wasn't ready to go. It didn't need to do anything. So uh, compressor is functioning as expected. Surprised it didn't recycle. I don't know why, apparently. I... All right, so that's the air for my trailer, but there's one more thing to show you. So hang on, let me go back down there and we'll see what's going on. So the other thing that I have, and if I hook up my second air hose, So this air hose actually leads out through that cubby where you also see uh, the electrical uh, feeds out through. And it leads to the front of the trailer, so let me show you that. Coming back through here, basically it's just a Flexzilla coil hose. And it leads up to this air hose uh, nozzle, this uh, air gun nozzle. And this uh, allows me the flexibility of blowing off tools, kind of general cleanup around the trailer. Uh, so just a really, really handy uh, system to have as far as having air on the trailer with just a flexible, flexible cord. I do have one attachment to it. Down in my long drawer... I have this older, uh, obviously, orange cable or red cable, whatever color that is, that I used to use, but it was promoted to me that the uh, Flexzilla kinks less because of the way they have uh, created their ends on the uh, hoses. And so I use that because that is under a little bit of tension uh, going back into the compressor. And so if I want to work around the trailer with this air, I can use that extension on this, and then I have the flexibility of working on this side or that side or just generally generally around the trailer and that is very convenient i can also pull out like i have right now i can pull out the actual air hose and then have greater uh, mobility around the trailer as well but right at the end it's it's kind of e easy and nice and i don't really have to wind it back up like i do that one so very convenient I use the recommended uh, reels that Ron Polk recommends. Uh, those were the ones in his Amazon cart. Uh, I ordered them from his store. They didn't charge me anymore, but they paid him a little bit of money and helped support his channel. And uh, hey, all right, cool. Maybe one day I will have an Amazon store and you can help me support my channel by paying no more, but maybe they would pay me a little bit. Ah, the dreams, right? The dreams. So with that being said, let me spin around here. <clears throat> no sense in looking at the house when you can look at this magnificent, beautiful tool arrangement of a trailer here, right? So with that, um, I uh, do have the Ames reels. I have two matching reels. And uh, he has a video out there when he was, you know, to show how he modified it, which is basically take it apart, take the plumbing um, insides out of it, and just put the reel back together, uh, and it just frees up some space there makes the reels a little bit more functional. So I have two matching reels, one for the electric, that's a 10-3. Um, uh, he uses, uh, Ron Polk uses a Flexzilla. Uh, I think it's either a Utilitech utility, utility or a Yellow Jacket, but it's a 10-3, 100 footer, and that has done everything I needed to do for this trailer as far as powering the trailer from shore power. And it is in fact plugged in right there. On the recovery side of things, all I need to do is disconnect that pigtail from here. And when I come down, I just coil the pigtail up there so I know where it's at all the time. I do actually have also a uh, small uh, extension so I can uh, blow up car tires and things like that relatively quickly. And it'll go on the end of any of my air hoses with the way it's set up. Then it's just a matter of reeling it in. So that's all it takes to recover uh, the air uh, as far as uh, from the reel and, and everything else. I do um, unplug both. Of course, I have to unplug the pigtail. Otherwise, the, you know, the reel, the reel system won't work because it'll just, you know, continually wind the uh, pigtail itself. But also, I do unplug it at the compressor. And I do unplug my front air from the compressor when I'm not using it. Because I have found that... If I leave those in, apparently I have some, some leaky inlets because it will actually lose air over time. I don't know. I, you know. It seems like I've tried a couple of different things, and I can't really pin it down, so I think it's the compressor itself. Okay, so right down here, I believe Ron did this, and I think I've seen a couple of others uh, who have done this as well. So what I have is I've actually hooked up the, uh, a line with a valve on it so I can drain this compressor at any time and get the water out of the tank. And so that just feeds on this uh, braided stainless steel line. Yeah, there we go. And so that goes to a valve and that valve actually just uh, goes and I can pull this off. 
This is what it looks like. So I just have a valve on a T on a on an elbow with a small nipple that goes down through a proportionate sized hole, and then I can drain my compressor at any time. Probably twice a year, uh, maybe three times a year if I'm really thinking about it. I'll go ahead and uh, cycle it and get some pressure in that tank and then you know, let it drain, let the air actually force the water out. Do that a couple more times to try and force any and all water out and then call it good and, and uh, close that valve up. And then let it go for another three, four, five months. <laughs> and so the air in the trailer continues. So um, that's the air. I hope I have shown enough and answered any and all questions. But if you have any questions about what's going on, by all means, please. Um, I have some interesting ideas for the next trailer. In the next trailer, this is a 6x10. Minimally, I'll have 7x12, 7x14, or 8x12. I don't think I'd go 8 by 14 but and I want the extra height, uh, so, you know, this is, you know, I'm not very tall, so this is perfectly fine for me. I'm a hobbit. And, you know, whatever the height is, 72 inches, perfectly fine. But I do want the extra foot, if I can get it, because that allows me to go one cabinet higher and get more space. So uh, it'll become a way more functional trailer. Plus, it'd be tandem axle and be able to do all kinds of other things, too. So um, looking forward to that. But that is uh, probably a couple of years out, to be honest with you, uh, as much as I would love to just start building a new trailer. <laughs> I don't have the finances for so, hey, uh, thank you for uh, hanging out with me and, uh, you know, your patronage to any of my videos. It really, truly is appreciated because I like contributing back to the community that I'm a part of. And uh, just I get so much from uh, YouTubers who are, you know, really putting out some great construction tool oriented comment. And I hope I'm kind of contributing back. Maybe I threw out there a nugget of an idea or, hey, if you, maybe you're thinking if this Yahoo can do it. I can certainly do it, and I would vote for you every time on that. If, if this Weisenheimer, if this goofball can do it, you can do it too. Uh, doesn't, you know, say, <laughs> results speak for themselves, you know, so uh, there you go. Uh, good luck with any build that you've got or whatever projects you have going on, uh, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.